Macau. Explain to us how you think about the U.S.-China relationship, given some of the comments that Donald Trump has made about China being a, manipula uh, a currency manipulator. Did that, did that come up during your meeting? Well, I think first, in America, there's a freedom of speech, right? So he can say whatever he wants, and I respect, I understand. But of course, I have my views. We did not uh, the debate about the China US trade or manipulation. We did not debate. We did not talk. We uh, actually we agreed on something small business, developing the Midwest America, helping the farmers there, small business there, to exporting to China. So we all agreed. But something that we did not discuss about the, you know, the American the, the job losing to China, Mexico, and this. Can I share with you my ideas? Please. Yeah. First, I think 30 years ago, when I just graduated from universities, I heard America had a wonderful strategy. They outsource the manufactured job, service jobs. They outsource the manufacturer to Mexico and China. Outsource the service job to, to India. There's a book called The World is Flat. Tom right? Friedman, yeah. colleague at the New York Times. And I think it's a perfect strategy. You know that they, the Americans said, oh, we just want to control the IP, we just want to technology, we just want to brand and leave the, the, the lower end jobs for the world. Great strategy. And second is that the American international companies made millions and millions of dollars from globalization. The top, 10, top 100 companies in America Amazing. I remember uh, when I graduated from university, I tried to buy a beeper, the Motorola beeper. <laughs> Cost me $250. My pay at that time was $10 a month as a teacher. And the cost of making that beeper is only $8 for a chip. Right. So, past 30 years, IBM, Cisco, Microsoft, they made a tons of money. The money, the profit they made, are much more than the four largest banks in China put together. The Mo China Mobile Phone, China Unicom, and whatever you name it, put together. Still, these multinational companies made more money than. So their market cap grew more than 100 times in the past 30 years. But where did the money go? This is what I'm curious, because as a business people, I always care about the balance of shit. Where the money coming, where the money go? Past 30 years, the American had 13 wars, spending $14.2 trillion. The money going there. What if they spend a part of that money on building up the infrastructure, helping the white, the, the white colors and blue colors? No matter how strategic good it is, you're supposed to spend money on your own people, right? On the, not everybody can pass Harvard. Like me, we are not good at education, right? We should spend money on those people who are not good at schooling. And the other money which I'm curious about is that when I was young, I heard America is bad at Ford, Ford and Boeing, those big manufacturing companies. The last 10, 20 years, I heard about is Silicon Valley and Wall Street. The money go to the Wall Street. And what happened? Year 2008. The financial crisis wiped out $19.2 trillion USA alone. They wiped out all the white colors and destroyed 34 million jobs globally. So what if the money, it's not Wall Street, what if the money spent on the Middle East, Middle West of the United States, developing the industry there, that could be changed a lot. So it's not the other countries steal jobs from you guys. It is your strategy, okay, but, but you do not distribute the money, the, the money and things in a proper way. This is what I... And now we are having a backlash, and that backlash is a rebuke of globalization and so much of the conversation, frankly, that we have here, and that backlash is happening in the United States, but I will say President Xi was here yesterday, you had lunch with him, and he was quoting Abraham Lincoln. What did you make of that? Well. I would say that uh, globalization is a great stuff. 
It's, it's the U.S. It's developed countries to teach us how to do globalization. I remember 2002 or one before China joined the WTO, everybody in China was worried. Me, I was worried. Because what if all the international com products come to China, destroy our industry, and we have to lose a job? So convince the China after 20 years, then you guys are telling, say, this is a terrible thing. I believe globalization is good, but globalization needs to be improved. This is Donald Trump, president-elect, want to solve it, the problems. That globalization, I think, should be inclusive globalization. In the past 30 years, the globalization was controlled by 60,000 big companies. A hundred years ago, globalization was controlled by several kings and emperors. What if next 30 years we can support 6 million business doing business across the board? What if in next 30 years we can help support 20 million small business can do right. business across the board? So this is something which I believe globalization should be inclusive. And do you think that the words of President Xi will happen in reality, which is to say yeah. that China has largely acted on its own behalf for many, many years, and now is effectively saying that the U.S. needs to continue acting on everybody else's behalf. Yeah, I think you know the world needs some. Um, I, as uh, being, it's a, such a Mr. Xi yesterday said, it's a wonderful time, it's a bad time, or the worst time. The world needs a new leadership, but the new leadership is about working together. This is what I understand. We do not necessarily need one specific leader to teach us what to do, what not to do. But the world has to partner together. This is what I think. And I think I like, as a Chinese, as a business people, I like, I feel proud for what President Xi said yesterday. As a business person, I want the world to share the prosperity together, to join the force together. As a Chinese, I'm happy about what he committed Yesterday he said, um, you know, he speaks like us, takes the responsibility of the second largest economy. As the China's second largest economy, he has to take some responsibility. This is the first time I heard a Chinese leader make number commitment. He said, next 10 years, we are going to import 8 trillion US dollars. This a few, this few make me feel excited because China is transforming from exporting to importing. If there's a concrete number, if we can fulfill it, this is going to be huge change to, to the China and to the world.